ladies and gentlemen. We got Mr. George McBride. How you feel today, Mr. George McBride? I feel great, bro. How you doing? All right. Um, so to my understanding is that you are the first African-American male in the United States of America to design, manufacture, and distribute medical instruments that we know as eye glasses. From my understanding, from what I Googled, um, I looked it up, and the last individual that did that was Powell Johnson. And Powell Johnson did that in 1890. And Powell Johnson created something that was called eye protection with that we now know as goggles. Um, so first and foremost, I want to say uh, congratulations. And um, I appreciate you for making the history that you made. Um, how do you feel about making history, my brother? Well, first off, I didn't, you know, I didn't invent eyewear. I just, the first person in our community to actually design the frame, manufacture the frame, and distribute the frame. So I think I'm paving the way as far as um, those unique aspects in the industry. So I think that's something that makes this company unique in the eyewear industry. So, um... I wanted to ask you, how long you've been doing this? Well, I first started out with that idea back probably in 2015, and I just I kind of started out just designing the temples on the frame, and I would buy the fronts and craft the exotic wood temples on the sides of the frame and fashion them to the front of the frame, and um, that was pretty much my selling point because. You know, a lot of people in our community didn't know about the different exotic woods that I was using. So I kind of mastered that technique and crafting exotic woods on the frame. And that's pretty much how I, I got started. So when you say exotic woods, like, what, um, I'm not really too familiar about that. So can you give me a little bit of insight on the woods? But a lot, a lot of the woods that I used to use was imported. So that that's what made it kind of clever because we imported exotic woods from Africa, Brazil, um, and a lot of other, a lot of other places that you know that wasn't really common in the eyewear industry or you know in, in you know in the in the in the community. So we just used that to our advantage for a selling point at that point in time. Thank you. Um, so I, how many hours have you been doing this for? Like, cause I know it's, it takes a certain amount of hours for someone in a certain, um, industry and in a certain, uh, craft and a certain, you know, um, well, do you know how many hours makes an individual an expert? Well, they say, they say mastery is 10,000 hours in your craft. Okay. And, um, and I'm, and I'm up with a 20,000 hours and just hands-on manufacturing, designing, and distributing eyewear. So I'm like double mastery or something like that, but I well past mastery. Oh, wow. As far as, as, far as the craft. Yeah, so how many hours? I'm just being nosy. I'm sorry. So how many, um, how many uh, hours would that be a day? Man, I, I used to work. Starting out, I used to work. 10 or 15 hours a day. Oh, I, you know, I got a space. I got a small commercial space. And um, I used to sleep in there. I used to be in there 15 hours a day. I, I would leave just to take a shower and I would come right back. You know, I kind of fell in love with the process. You know, I, I, I was doing 15, at least 10 to 15 hours a day my first couple of years. And I, I really didn't take no days off. I, I was working Sunday to Sunday. You know, oh, just wow. learning and falling in love with the craft. Mm. Wow. And so what would, in your opinion, um, what would you say was the most difficult part of the process? For me, I think the most difficult part was this, this um, designing the frame because the frame got to be comfortable. It got to be comfortable, comfortable to wear because it's like a functional, functional product. And balancing the frame, you know, you got you got to balance the frame so the frame sits right. And I think that's that took me the longest to figure out. It's really difficult balancing the frame. You really have to 
know what you're doing. And I, you know, and I, I didn't really have nobody like hands on right there showing me the process. So a lot of the stuff I learned through trial and error. So right. I think I think those are the most difficult parts for me. So about how many classes you think you messed up before you before you learned to say, okay, now I got it down packed on how the way that I want to balance. How long did that take? Well, it, it took me, I didn't have a pair of sellable glasses at least six months. I was working, you know, I bought a piece of equipment, you know, after researching right. and everything. And um, it probably took me at least six months to get to a point where I had a pair of frames that I can sell for money. Right. Okay. And you said one of the most interesting parts was actually doing the designing. Yeah, the interesting part was designing because it's infinite. It's infinite design. So everybody going to have a different way of designing a frame and putting a frame together. So that that's the beauty of each individual person that's learning the craft. It's like everybody going to have their own way of designing. And it's infinite as far as how you can design the shapes and colors and blends and put all the things together to make a wearable piece of art. So everybody going to have a different eye. For, for what they doing. Right. And um, I know that you guys just had Juneteenth down here in Washington, D.C. Um, I wanted to ask, like, um, what was your thought about the history? Because I know that you guys got the Black Museum down there. And I know that one of your, after speaking with you on the phone earlier, before I flew out here, um, I understood that you were saying that you wanted to get into some museums and also that you were interested in getting on, um, what was that, Shark Tank? Yeah, Shark Tank. <clears throat> shark type of dream of mine is getting in front of the sharks and, you know, telling my story of how I put a tremendous amount of time and effort into learning the craft and taking a lot of processes from, you know, Japanese artisans, Italian artisans, France, you know, French artisans and um, Belgium artisans. And basically, I just kind of took all that and crafted my own process out of it after I learned bits and pieces of it. So I love to go on Shark Tank to give them, you know, pitch my story and pitch the brand. You know, so, the shop. yeah, and one thing about me, um, I'm not going to sit right here and uh, tell you any story, Mr. McBride, and let you uh, think that I know something that I don't know about. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that I was... Um, looking at Shark Tank one day, and I was interested to know. Um, I noticed that some people that came on there had already was yeah. interested into certain um, certain individual that was already on the uh, show. What what host would you be more interested in leaning towards? Um, do you have a favorite? Can I ask that? Do you have a favorite by any chance? Well, well, I think Damon might be the most suitable because I think he may have the infrastructure that may work best for me, being the fact that he was in the fashion industry. So I don't know if any of the other shocks was in the fashion industry per se, but I, I'm pretty sure that Damon was in the fashion industry, and I'm sure he has the infrastructure to, you know, make the bring the, make the brand successful. All right. So, um. I just wanted to say thank you for coming out, Mr. McBride. I definitely appreciate your time. I know that you was on your way to the flight to go to Miami. And um, I definitely appreciate you for coming out and taking the time out to stop and talk to me. And I just want to say congratulations on being the first African-American male in the United States of America to design, manufacture, and distribute eyeglasses. And um, I just want to give you a roses while here. And uh, I appreciate you for looking out for a low-budget individual like myself. And just giving me an opportunity to um, interview. Thank you. Thank you.